What is a quantum field? What does it look like? Thomas Gaidasik teaches quantum field theory at Vilnius University, and he teaches it in this video personally to John Harland, um, who has a PhD in functional analysis and leads the Math for Wisdom study group in physics, and to me. I am Andrus Kulikauskas. This is Math for Wisdom. You, in any case, you're going to give us an example of, of how we can in, fit, a, fit a, one of these operators together with a field. I, right? I hope I can write it down, for instance, for the quantum field. Mm -hmm. If I make the simplest example and write down a scalar field, there's one way of writing it down. A scalar field, phi of x and t. I can also write only x because I have a four vector, so x is included, x includes t. And then I can write it down as just a Fourier integral d4 k over 2p to the fourth. Now my amplitude phi a t tilde plus a dagger, and this is now of k, a dagger of k plus t tilde minus a of k, and this is also of k, and this is the simplest part. I, I'm not sure about the, how to normalize it, maybe there's another factor and so on, yes. but this is the simplest way of combining them. But that means I don't have a single creation or annihilation operator, oh, sorry. I forgot the exponential factor i k x e to the minus i k x. Yeah, so and that is again and, and the second one should be an annihilation operator. Uh, yes. It should be a minus with the a, right? Mm -hmm. I can write a minus, but I can write also no no part. Okay. So I have a dagger of k is a minus emission conjugate of k. And what does the tilde mean? That I'm in Fourier space. It doesn't depend on x, but on k. Oh, it's the new, it's the yes. transform. Okay. Yes. And one can okay. write down with four, or one can write it down with three. If one writes it down with three, you lose Lorentz covariance. If you write it down with four, you have to make sure that here comes in the relation additionally that this, if this describes a particle, that the particle mass is in this relation in it. But that's given by the field equations too. And, and so the e to the i k x is expressing Just the Fourier point. transform? Yes, nothing else. But it ends up having this kind of significance of a phase factor or not? No, it's just a... Yes, you can say it's a phase factor. Okay. It's a phase factor that is everywhere in space different. And everywhere in momentum different. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is already here where one of the problems appear. Because these phase factors are looking like plane waves. But the plane wave is not localized. If it's not localized, how does it mean that I have a particle and it's everywhere in the universe? Does it make sense? Yes. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. That is a conceptual part, and the only thing why people do it is because the mathematics becomes so much easier. Except for, okay, there are infinities appearing because of it. Yes. If you don't want infinities, you have to have limitations on your functions that you have here. Well, they have to be L2 or whatever. Uh, yeah. yeah, well, not even L2, they should be actually distributions. Having only a limited support in order that the particle is only there. Uh, and and it's. But if you find distributions, you cannot invert them. So if you cannot invert them, how do you treat that if you want to Fourier transform this again? Then your distribution is ill defined. And this is where all the hazard comes in. I mean, not all, but this is one way where a lot of difficulties come in mathematically. If you ignore them, well, they don't disturb. That's the funny part. They really don't disturb. 
If you ignore them. If you ignore that there are difficulties coming in and just use them. Okay, here I have a rule how to treat it and have an idea how to maybe define it properly. Then one can go a long, long way, all the, always the thinking, always the concepts, without encountering difficulties which are not overcome by, okay, I have to implement now this definition additionally. I have to assume that now when I want to have a particle, I should think physically a particle <coughs> is something that is somewhere constrained. It has also some, a somewhat defined energy, somewhat defined momentum. Of course, physically, I don't know exact the position. I don't know exact its momentum. But this is represented in this field representation anyway. But I should then not ask, what is exactly the point where the particle is? Because, well, it's distributed. So, but I think the way I'm reading this, like you start with the phi tilde of K and then you'll be integrating, you know, I mean, so in the K is like a moment, it's like a, it's, it's like the momentum of an energy, it's the, f in space time, it's right? It's like, a transformation parameter. Right, so because you're going to get four dimensional space time, so then the analog would be three dimensional momentum and energy, I think, right? Yes. So you start with a five tilde uh, defined on that and then you, s Yes, but if I start to define and define and define, I come, I would say, into Hell's Kitchen because all the definitions are not enough to define really mathematically what is going on. Oh, okay, I'm just trying to understand yes. what I'm reading here. Yeah, yeah. But so, so then, uh, and then these are not basically saying like the way I read this, which may be wrong, but you have a you have a notion of annihilation of creation operators, and you have a notion of annihilation operators which kind of says there's this notion of particle in a certain sense, that particles can be or they cannot, they can, they can materialize or they can unmaterialize. And you have this um, phase factor, which is by which the Fourier transform will proceed when you integrate over these uh, momentum energy things. And then where the complication all comes from, where all the constraint comes from is that five tilde is basically uh, expressing um, the kind of certainty, like so, like that this quantum field, in a certain sense, it's a description of the constraint on the certainty. Like, well, you can't say exactly where something is. It could, it, in a certain sense, it's possibly everywhere, but there's a global constraint, which is the information that you have, and that is the quantum field. It's this general globe. It's the expression of the constraint on the certainty. But you have only a single quantum field for all the electrons in the universe. Okay, so which may perhaps be broken up into subsystems or not, uh, or approximated into subsystems, so you have one. But I think but that's, that's my try attempt to understand. Okay. What is the remark or the question by John? <laughs> I no, I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to get the, get the uh, gestalt down. I'm trying yeah. to get the main idea. Uh, the saving grace is that you can carry through these formal com computations very far without worrying about yes. these technical difficulties. Yes. And later you have to deal with them. Yes. But you can go very, very far. Yes. And then in the end, you're gonna get some, you're gonna be able to compute some quantities, some of which actually have physical meaning, others of which maybe don't have physical meaning, but you can ignore them. Uh, kind in of, some way, uh, yes. Hopefully ignore them. Um, yes. And then that, so it mean, tells you how to renormalize. Yeah, and, right. yeah, but we will come to renormalization because this is one of the essential questions that quantum field theory has and quantum mechanics does not. And so what I'm drawing from you and from many hours of tutorials uh, and, and exposition from John is that uh, uh, John gave like three or four lectures to me about the dispersal of the wave function where he in detail described how you use the uh, Fourier transform from, uh, I guess it was a, a position space to momentum space and the inverse Fourier transform in the other direction. And then you calculate what, you know, things that certain sense things look easiest in momentum space, uh, but then you want to get your answer out in position space. 
And what this says to me is that that turns out to be absolutely fundamental to physics. I mean, this is basically just saying it really boils down to all that, except in addition, you will uh, focus on this creation and annihilation. Like, if you understood now from that lens, no. what does it mean to I add creation and annihilation operators? Okay, so then, then I'm wrong. But about the, but but about the in the, the Fourier transform part, was that uh, on track or not? No. I mean, the Fourier transform part is allowing to solve equations easily, like in classical okay. field theory. But that's all that this is saying. It's just relating momentum space and position yes. space. Yes. Okay. Yes. But the idea of quantum field theory is not. I mean, you asked me for an example. Oh, I see. Yeah. So. This is the example, and this is the example of a so-called free field at now, but how do we know it's free field just because I tell it? There's nothing visible from that. Any field in principle can be written up as something that will create the field somewhere, the particles, and with some type of amplitude, one writes it down. And so John was teaching me about the free field in quantum mechanics, yes. and you're saying this is a free field, and that's why they look similar. Yes. I mean, yes, okay. they are similar. Well, we were integrating over, I mean, uh, not, yeah. not just function, or in, in, in a sense, instead of having function amplitudes, we have, mm -hmm. we have operator amplitudes. Yes, and so then that you're treating time and space on the same terms. And yes. I, like, I like operators, so I'm good with this. Yes, um, good. So, but now, when I use the part of fields and not say they are quantum fields, I can write down my Lagrangians, right? Thank you for watching this video. Please uh, go to mathforwisdom.com or simply read the description to this video to learn how you can join our Math for Wisdom discussion group and our study groups. Thank you for liking this video, for subscribing to this YouTube channel, and for supporting Math for Wisdom through Patreon. I became a Math for Wisdom Patreon supporter. I went to the webpage, patreon.com, found Math for Wisdom, and after just a few minutes of filling a few things out, boom, I was a Math for Wisdom Patreon supporter. You can do it too.